Hi, in this chapter, we're going to talk about the various operations we can perform with files. All this while, all the programs we wrote, the data was stored in memory. So once the program finished, all our data was lost. But let's say you want to store the data permanently. Like you take a student database, a student joins, you could of course add it to your linked list. But once your day is over, you may want to copy all the data into a file. You don't want to lose the data permanently. Let's say your system crashes you, or something like that, then you may just lose all your data, right? So you need to permanently store it somewhere on your hard disk. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about the various operations that we can perform with files. So when you work with files, there are three basic operations you need to perform. First, you need to open the file. Then you can perform any kind of activity or operation you want, that is read or write, etc. And then finally, once you're done, you need to close the file. Now to keep track of what you've done with the file, let's say the last byte that you wrote to the file or the last location in the file that was written to or the last location in the file from where you read, etc. You need some kind of a data type which keep does the tracking for you. So this special data type is called file. It's all in capitals. It's a special structure that has already been defined in stdio.h. So how do we make use of this data type? Let's see. Firstly, you need to open the file. So to open a file, you use the function fopen. The function fopen takes the name of the file as a first parameter and the second parameter is the mode. The mode can be R, W or A. R says you're going to open it in read mode so you can only read from the file. W says you can write to the file and A says you're opening the file in append mode. That is you're writing to the end of the file. So once you open the file, the function fopen will return a handle or a pointer to you. That handle or pointer is of the type file star. Also, the file name that you pass over here can be an absolute path name or the relative path name. Let's say the file is in the same folder as where your program is sitting, then you can just pass the file name as it is. But let's say if it's in some other folder, then you may have to pass the absolute path name, which is starting from C colon slash ABC slash so on. And let's say the file you specify does not exist or for some reason fopen is unable to open the file. In that case, fopen will return a null to you. So if, fo so if fopen returns null, you know there was some problem opening the file. And finally, let's say you want to create a new file. You can still use fopen to do the same. Call fopen with the mode of w and if the file does not exist, it will create the file and open the file and keep it ready for writing. So that's F open. So you've done the first task, that is opening the file. Now the next thing you generally do is either read some data from the file or write some data to the file. There are multiple functions that are available to help you do that. In this slide, we're going to talk about the get C and the put C. The get C is simple. It gets a single character from the file. So you need to pass the file pointer, which was returned to you by F open. F open return a file pointer. You pass that file pointer to get C, it'll get a single character. So if you keep calling get C multiple times, the first time it'll get the first character, the second time it'll get the second character, and so on. And finally, the character that get C reads from the file is returned to you. Similarly, put C is used to write a character to the file. So the character C over here is written to the file, which is pointed to by the file pointer FP. So get C and put C are simple. Get C will read one character at a time and put C will put one character into the file. Now where in the file it needs to write to is already being kept track of by FP. Within FP it knows the last position it read from. So when you call get C and it reads the first character, the next time you call get C it knows it has to read the second character and then it has to read the third character, so on. Similarly, put C also keeps track of where to write to the file. The first time when you write, it writes to the starting of the file. Second time you call put C, it'll write on the second byte. The third time you call, it'll write at the third position and so on. So this file pointer FP keeps track of where you would last written or where you would last read from the file. And finally, the last operation once you're done with all the reads and writes is to close the file. You have a function called fclose. You just pass the file pointer and it shall close the file for you. Playing around with files or file operations are pretty simple. So let's now write a program which is going to read a given file and going to print all the content of the file on your screen. Let's see how we're going to do that. 
So first thing as usual, we need a hash include. Even for file operations, all the functions are part of stdio.h. We have int main. Okay, first thing we need to do is open the file and fopen will return a file pointer. So we need to store the file pointer in a variable. So we need to declare a file pointer. Let's call it fp. Now we can say fp equals fopen. We need to give the file name and the mode. They both are strings. The mode in this case is going to be read mode because we just want to read from the file and we're going to write it to the screen. So we can open it in read mode. If you want to open a file in write mode, you'll just say w. So it's just going to open it in read mode. Now, let's say the file I want to open is test.txt. So that's the name of the file, given that. So fopen will open the file test.txt in read mode and return the file pointer, which will be stored in fp. Now, what do I need to do? I need to read the file and print it to the screen. So the simplest thing I can do is read one character at a time and keep printing that one character to the screen. So to read a character you have get c and I just pass the file pointer. He will return the character to me so I need to store the character so I say ch so I need a char ch. Now once I have the character I just need to print it on the screen so I say printf percentage c ch so now we've printed the first character from the file on the screen we need to keep repeating this to print everything till the end of the file so how we do that is let's have a do while loop so how do we know when to stop reading from the file When you reach the end of the file, getc will return a macro called eof. So if ch is equal to eof, which stands for end of file, then we stop reading. So you say, well, ch is not equal to eof. So as long as it's not equal to eof, you can keep getting a character and printing it on the screen. Finally, we just print one more backslash n before we call system pause and return 0. So that's our program. It's as simple as that. We're getting a character and we're printing it on the screen. There's one thing that we've forgotten to do, that is close the file. So once we've done with all the read operations, we just need to close it. So we say f close fp and we're done. Let's save this and compile this program and see if there are any errors. Compile. And we have an error. That's because we've forgotten the semicolon after the do while loop. Let's compile it again. No errors or warnings. So now before we run this program, we need to create this file called test.txt and write something into it. Let's do that. Okay, so let's say hello world. I'll write multiple lines. How are you? Some random letters. And we're good to go. Let's save this. Now let's run our program. There you go. You got hello world, you got how are you, you got the jumbled random letters and finally press any key to continue. So there. Now there's a small mistake in our program that we haven't taken care of which is fopen can return null if the file did not exist. So let's say test.txt did not exist. It's not going to create it for us because we're opening it in read mode. In which case it will return null. And if fp is null, if you try to say get c null, it can cause problems. So we need to take care of that. So every time you open, you need to check whether it was able to open the file. If fp is equal to equal to null, 
then you just print unable to open file system pause and return now we already have test.txt so let's try and open test1.txt and see if our printf comes compile no errors or warnings we run they're unable to open the file we have test.txt it works magic there you go now we're going to make a small modification to this program instead of using printf I'm going to call putsy we have seen on the slide that putsy puts a character to the file so you can put the character here so say ch is the character and now where do we want to put it we want to put it to the screen the screen has a special file handle which is called std out standard out so if you want to print something to the screen you can always print it to std out std out is your file pointer for the screen printf by default prints it to std out similarly putsy can be used to to put the to put it to the screen so we're going to remove printf now we have putsy ch to std out let's see if this works the same no errors or warnings there you go we have the exact same output so now you know the special file handle for your screen is std out so you don't have to open std out separately or you don't have to open a file for your screen you just start writing something to std out it will come to your screen so we had said earlier that putsy can be used to put a character to a file and here we are putting it to std out which is behaving like a file now instead of std out let's say i given another file pointer say fp and let's call this fp1 we're just going to change everything in the program so we have fp1 okay so if i say putsy to fp2 that means whatever character i read from fp1 will be copied or written to fp2 then automatically this program will work like a file copy program so i read something from test.txt and i can open another file let's say fp2 is equal to f open i say destination.txt and we're going to open this in write mode so i'm not going to create the file desk.txt because i'm opening it in write mode if it doesn't exist f open will create it itself if there's an error and we'll just say just take this print the error finally close this so now i've opened test.txt in read mode i've opened dest.txt in, in write mode so i'm reading from fp1 which is test.txt i get a character ch and i put the character ch into fp2 which is dest.txt so now what should happen is at the end of the program there should be a file called dest.txt in my folder and if i open that file in notepad i should see the contents to be exactly the same as test.txt so it's similar to how you do a copying right you copy a file from one folder to another it copies the contents of the file that's exactly what we're doing here let's see if this works let's compile it we have an error okay that's because we haven't declared fp2 so we need fp2 let's compile still have an error
Okay, so that is because fp2 is supposed to be a pointer. We missed that out. Now let's compile it. No errors or warnings. Let's run the program. It did not show anything on std out because we're not printing anything to the screen. Now let's open our folder and see if we have a file called dest.txt. So in notepad, let me go to open. There, I have a dest.txt. Let's open this. And there, the contents are exactly the same as test.txt. Let me open test.txt too. There, this is test.txt and this is test.txt. The contents are exactly the same. Except for one small problem, which is in the end we have this one, some special character here. And I wonder why that's coming. Let's look at our program. And this is because we have a do while loop. So what will happen is when it reads the end of file character, so get C will return end of file. And it's not supposed to put the end of file character. It's just supposed to indicate to us that we finished reading, but we're still printing some character to FP2, which is wrong. So we're not supposed to use a do while loop in this case. So we're going to say while ch is not equal to EOF. We're going to keep doing this. Now there's a shorter way of writing the same. We can just say ch equal to get c fp1 is not equal to eof. So within the while loop itself, we first call get c, assign it to ch, check if it's not equal to eof is not equal to EOF, we say put C. Now let's try that again. Now this time I'm going to copy it to dest1.txt. Let's compile it. No errors or warnings. Let's run it. We're done. Let's open our notepad. This is dest.txt. Let's open dest1.txt. And there you go. You don't have that weird special character at the end. It ends with S, which is exactly the same as test.txt. There you go. So many of these small bugs that we create when you're writing programs can be easily rectified when you know your program really well as to what it is doing. So when you see a special character there, I automatically knew that I'm writing an extra character. And I could have written an extra character only because of the while loop. The while loop is doing one character extra. So simple. If you know your program really well, you can debug your problems very easily. So we have now seen how to write a program to copy the contents of one file to another.